Okay, let's start again then. Um, an object of mass 50 kilograms moves in a straight horizontal line and the action of a constant horizontal force of magnitude 1600 newtons. So if we, with this question, right, you, you need to you do a diagram. So you've got a horizontal force of 1600 newtons and um, acting along the line of motion, of course, going in the horizontal line. Resistance to the motion, there's a resistance as well, so we call that R, and um, it says that R is proportional, resistance is proportional to time T, okay, so we do that with me, when, to, to do you know, proportional, and of course the direction of acceleration then is this way, so R is proportional to T, so, you know, to introduce an equals, we say it's a multiple of T, so K is a constant T, so what I would do then is I would apply Newton's uh, second law of motion. The resultant force here will be 1600 forward, to take away the resistance. Now I could write this R, couldn't I? Or I could just call it KT now, couldn't I? Because I said R is equal to KT, proportional to time. Equals then mass times acceleration, 50A. All right? Now you see here, they give you some further information. They say, look, when, when T is 2, Velocity is 41 and acceleration is minus 4. So in this case, when t is 2, um, acceleration is minus 4. That would be useful because really we want to work out k, don't we? You know, there's no k in there. So 1600 take away um, k times 2 equals 50 times the acceleration, which is minus 4. So you get k turns out to be 900. Okay, if you put algebra for that, you get K out. So put it back in, 1600 minus KT, so minus 900T equals 50A. All right, now what we can do here is, of course, we need to realize A is just dV dt, isn't it? Okay, rate of change of velocity. And if you look up here, there's nothing in front of it. So you've got 50 here. If we divide by 50, okay, that becomes 32, that becomes 18. And you get your solution, okay? That's what they wanted. Part B, um, it says, find an expression for V in terms of T. Now, of course, we've got acceleration here. So to get V, we need to integrate. So we separate the variables. This becomes V. This becomes 32t, that becomes 9t squared, plus a constant. Now, that's not quite an expression that we want, because um, <coughs> with an expression, you need to have worked out what the constant is. But don't forget, if you go back to the initial information, t is 2, velocity is 41. So we could say when t equals 2, velocity is 41. So 41 will equal <coughs> this. So that becomes... Okay, so 41 will equal 28 plus C, so that means C is 13. Okay, so you worked out your constant, so therefore V equals 32T minus 90 squared plus 13. There's your expression. To complete it, it says then find the times when the velocity of the object is 28. So we need to set V to equal 28. Okay, so 28 equals 32t minus 90 squared plus 13. And, you know, if you get that onto one side as a quadratic, you then be able to um, solve it to get the time. So 90 squared minus 32t plus 15 equals 0. Okay. Now this can actually be factorised. Okay, believe it or not. Right, it can be factorised. Right. If you um, do it like this, so 90, um, 5 and 3 goes there. Okay, you can use the formula method, okay? The formula method as well, if you're not sure, but I, I'm going to factorise it here. Um, both of these are minus, and I think that works out. Let's double check it. Yeah, we're getting what we want. So then, therefore, you say 90 minus 5 equals 0, which means t will equal 5 over 9 or t minus 3 equals 0, which means t equals 3. And it's job done.